Hey everybody, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Dr. Stone episode 19 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. Those, like, like the, the whole tribe of like those giant dudes, with, like the huge arms and like six packs and like the really broad shoulders, would not exist in a stone world. Any sort of athlete or bodybuilder has like a specific diet to help them like either maintain their body mass, muscle mass, or like increase or decrease it. In this environment, these guys, like, they don't have the access to, to enough calories to actually, like, maintain their muscle mass, let alone grow anymore. Like, especially, like, back in, like, the actual, like, Stone Age, cavemen were pretty short compared to what we are right now because they didn't have access to proper nutrition and they didn't eat enough food. But that, neither of those are problems today. Like, we, I mean, for, for the majority of the world, we have access to all the food that we need, all the nutrition that we can possibly ask for. But for you to get to like that size, <laughs> for any sort of human being, you have to eat a lot of food every day for the rest of your life. Like there's no way that these people have access to enough calories to maintain their muscle mass. Uh, okay, I've seen enough. There's, there was plenty of things that were just said that I completely disagree with. To say that this world right now is the equivalent of modern day slavery because half of your income goes towards your rent every month is absolutely one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. If you had to choose between living in a cave and paying half of your like income to living inside of a home with like really good shelter you pretty much shelter it from all weather conditions with heat refrigeration clean running water a stove to cook on like and there's so much more like there's there's so many advantages to having civilization and living in a house as opposed to just living in a cave just think about it like this if the outside world is so great why has humanity spent the past couple thousand years trying to perfect the inside? Also, like, arguments like these are just so irritating. Like, why would you think that this is like a, like some sort of scheme devised by somebody? Like, just look at what you have. <laughs> like, there's so much around you. Like, like, just them living in a cave? How is that better than living, like, inside of a house with all of these, like, amenities? That just doesn't make any sense to me. And you say, リセットされたこの世界で70億人は支えられない。ま、this this guy kind of sounds like Thanos to be honest, but it's I'll, I'll tell you this like um what he just I mean I, I'm sure that like what they're saying is not meant to be like scientifically accurate because this whole um like tribe or village is the anti-technology anti-science, but it you know, Following suit, what this guy just said is not scientifically accurate. The the Earth has more than enough resources to support everyone on it. Like we are not at all overpopulated. And in fact, we we can support like a billion or so more people. The the problem in the future will be not overpopulation but underpopulation. The difficulty and the problem to overcome is not like access to resources. It's more so how can you. Um, assimilate those resources and then transport them to people who need it. But uh, th th that's, this has been an issue since as long as civilization has been around. We don't, we just, we, we don't have a like efficient, good answer to that problem. But I can tell you right now, going back to living in a cave with no technology at all is not going to benefit the world. <laughs> That, that's pretty clever of them. Like, I don't know if she planned that as she was running away, but it just so happened that that, that works perfectly. And for, so yeah, as far as like the wind um, blowing all of like the, um, like the poisonous gas down from the crater to like where they are right now, that's, 
that's perfectly possible. I mean, that that I'm sure that's happened quite often. It's just, but understand that the further this toxic gas is from the source, the least potent it will become. The first time they went to that crater with all the um, hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide was like the reason it was so dangerous is because there were very high concentrations of the same gas. Like within that crater, there wasn't much of anything else except for the um, toxic elements. So that's why they had to be extremely careful. But the whole journey leading up to that area was completely fine. Because for, for one, like they're, they're pretty far from it right now. So even if the gas was to reach them, it would be in such low concentrations that it would be almost completely harmless. Any sort of gas or liquid, if you put it in any environment, it'll naturally try to diffuse so that it's an equilibrium with that environment. And what that means is when you take a very high concentration of extremely potent, like toxic gas, such as what they're doing here, when you put it in an environment of just regular air where there's mostly nitrogen, oxygen, and argon all around you, it'll diffuse into your environment. So like what we see right now is that the, the gas is at a pretty high height. Like it's literally going over Senku's head right now. And that is not possible because as we do know, these um, gases, they're much heavier than the air around them. So if the wind was to blow them over and it would like, like through the crater um, into the woods, it wouldn't, it, like they would never reach the height that Senku is right now. It would, they would probably build up around his ankles. And like it, it would start low and then build up. It wouldn't like start high and then just flow all the way down and then go low. That that wouldn't make any sense. This whole thing of like trying to climb into the trees to escape the poisonous gas, like that's just that's not at all accurate. Like if, if you're within that prox, if you're really really close <laughs> to the crater as the wind is being blown, like uh, I mean as the wind is blowing the toxic gas into your face, yeah, you have a very good reason to be concerned. But because of how far they are from the source the gas would like diffuse itself so quickly that it wouldn't even be a, a worry to them. And because it's so much more dense than the air around it, it if, if that level was to even reach them, it wouldn't go above their knees. So there's no chance of them actually breathing it in. The, the thing about science and technology that the um, Scoots, God, what's his name, like the, the one dude who like beat up the lions with his bare hands in episode one, the, the thing that like he doesn't quite understand about it is you, you cannot stop the progression of information. Like, like, like the longer humans are here, the more about our environment we're gonna wanna know. Like we're naturally curious and we're gonna wanna manipulate it such a way that benefits us the most. And that involves medicine and technology. Like you, you can't stop progress. <laughs> Even the non-science kingdom is utilizing new technology. Like whether they know it or not, because these people are using like spears, which are weapons technology, and they're using axes to cut down trees and for hunting. They have bow and arrows, like they have a dude like in a tree who had a bow and arrow, which is also weapons technology. And then they're carrying things in like sacks on their back, which is storage. And th they keep on developing ways to make their life easier so that they can achieve more with less work. So, I mean, I don't know what, like, I don't understand that mindset of like being anti-technology. Like no, no matter how you live your life, like technology will continue to develop. There is a point, however, that this progression of technology does become a, well, somewhat a problem because it, now it begs the question, can you stop artificial intelligence from being like, you know, created? And like for, for, for us to create an artificial intelligence robot that is um, sentient, meaning that it can think for itself and live for itself, it's, it's not so much a question of if we can do it because every technological, um, like project that we have started, we pretty much did it, right? Like if you told somebody in the 1940s, hey, we're gonna go to the moon, they would, they would look at you like you were crazy, yet now we can do it like fairly easily with what we have today. Like there's so many things right now that we can't even fathom that will happen in the next 50 to 100 years. As technology progresses and as more information is collected, your rate of like new technological growth will increase. What I mean by that is like as um as you develop new technology, the 
the newer technology that you'll develop from the previous one will come faster to you. So like for example, um, after we made, like I say we, after Thomas Edison created the first light bulb, within one year, light bulbs were really, really perfected. And after the, um, the creation of the internet, technology really exploded. And then after that, there's like a new thing every single day. But before that, we were discovering a new thing like every single year. And before that, it was a new thing every five or six years. But now, just all the time, because there are more people who have access to development. He's gonna build a cell phone? How? Okay, I, I, I was already iffy about their anti-biotic like biotic idea, but this is about to be legit if they can really pull this thing off. My initial thoughts on this are he won't be able to build a smartphone because there's no internet, but I, for, for him to even build a cell phone is gonna be tricky because you have to build a cell tower to actually, well, in fact, you have to build multiple cell towers depending on like uh, the, the distance at which you want to be able to communicate with your cell phones. Like if you want to go like really far distances, you have to build more than just one cell tower. And uh, beyond that, you need to have more than one cell phone. Like it, it, once you complete uh, this technology, only having one cell phone is useless. Like like a cell phone, like cell phones and the internet are certain technologies that are only useful depending on who else has it. Like if only one person has the internet, it's really not that impressive. But if everyone has it, it becomes a technological marvel. And cell phones are the same way. They're only really applicable or like fantastic technologies for communication if everyone has a cell phone. I feel like what Senku is gonna build is gonna it's gonna resemble more like walkie talkies than actual cell phones, because how how there are so many questions that are just coming through my mind right now. I mean, how is he gonna do? How I'm gonna just watch the next episode and I'll let you guys know how that goes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this commentary because I, I, I love this episode and I really love breaking it down. And if you want to see more Dr. Stone, just go ahead and put that in the comments below. If you want me to watch any other uh, like movie or TV show, let me know that and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.